All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Esther Miriam Wagner. I am the executive director, director of the Wolf Institute, and I would like to welcome you all to this, the new series, our new webinar series called Stick. Again, I have a, had a look at the uh, list of attendees and quite a few of, of you have already joined us in past webinars over the summer. Um, but there are also quite a few names I haven't seen before. So welcome to you all, to the newcomers uh, who joined us for this, for this new series. For those of you who are new um, and who are not yet familiar with the Wolf Institute, we are a research institution. We focus on religion and society and we combine research with teaching, with public education and with policy work in order to foster understanding between people of different beliefs and of no belief. Today we have Alisa Simon, who is the chair of the series and the intellectual brain behind it. Uh, she's a PhD candidate at the Department of Sociology in Oxford after having done a PhD here uh, at MPhil here with us in Cambridge. And she's also, I'm very proud to say, a research assistant at the Institute and our only um, scholar in Oxford because we are Cambridge based and so normally we only have students from Cambridge. But for Alisa, we made, of course, an exception. Also with us is Netta Schwamm, who is a PhD candidate at the Department of Jewish Philosophy at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. This new series, Stick, is a webinar series which focuses on the relationship between satire and religion. So Stick is a Yiddish word. Uh, it's defined as a, as a gimmick, a comic routine, a style of performance that is associated with a particular person. And the main theme of the series is to analyze what happens when we apply the medium of satire to religion, and more importantly, how people, both to those who are religious and those who are not religious, react to this kind of humor. And uh, from looking at the program, program of, of, of this term, we have, I think, five seminars, webinars in total. I expect this will be a very, very illuminating series. And that, without further ado, I'm handing over to Alisa. Thank you, Miriam. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. I'm really excited. Uh, the Jews are coming is a, is a personal favorite. Um, I think in these times when we're all constantly looking at our, at our phones and in our screens, it's very nice to have um, a webinar series that is supposed to make us all laugh and maybe laugh together. So I'm really excited to um, jumpstart shtick. Um, and just uh, for those of us who aren't aware of what the Jews are coming, uh, or haven't watched uh, the series, I'll just give like a little bit of a, of a maybe an introduction before uh, I pass on to Netta. So The Jews Are Coming um, was basically, it, it was starting to be created already in 2013 in Israel. Um, and they started producing the series and then a small segment of it leaked um, to the social media. And already, just even before the series premiered, before you know any national television bought it as 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 a series for its channel, um, there was a crazy uproar against this um, this series, and people really really criticized it. Um, and so then, um, actually, the the CEO of the channel that was going to purchase the series kind of backed off, and he said, "Oh no, like we don't want this series." He gave it another think. They censored a lot of a lot of content, and in the end, um, in November of 2014, the Jews are coming premiered in Israel, and automatically within two months, they already had more than 1.25 million viewers in Israel alone. So think about Israel; it's a we have a population there of about nine to ten million people. So 1.25 million people—that's that's a show that is a hit. Um, and, and ever since 2014, it's been rolling. And what we've seen ever since 2014 is that it's been very, very popular, but it's also been really, really criticized um, for uh, being, you know, laughing at religion, laughing at things that people hold dear. Um, but I'm gonna, net, uh, I'm gonna let Netta talk and expand more about the criticism and about what she thinks about the series. Um, and um, Netta is also gonna show us a snippet of the show. So don't worry if you haven't watched it, we'll, we'll get a flavor. Um, and how the webinar is gonna work today. So um, we'll have a presentation of between eight to 10 minutes. Um, during the presentation, we will also watch uh, part of the Jews are coming. And then after that, we'll have some time for Q&A. So if you look, um, please look at, the, at your screens at the bottom, there's a Q&A portal. Please type your questions there. Do not do so in the comments to the panelists, just so um, we can organize the questions uh, in a better, in a better uh, way. 
So without further ado, uh, Nete, if you can uh, present to us, that would be great. Okay. <clears throat> so thank you so much um, for having me, Alisa and Miriam. And this is a, really an honor for me. And I will continue where you left off um, in talking about what is in this show. The show is comprised of two kinds of skits. One kind of skit is the historical kind of skit. I'm not talking, I'm not going to talk about the historical skits. And if anybody wants to hear about them, you can do so in the question and answers. What I'm going to talk about is what everybody was talking about. It's the biblical skits. What do I mean a biblical skit? It's when they take, a, you know, some episode from the Bible. It could be in rabbinic Judaism, it could be a little later. And they replay it and recast it in a new light. And this new light takes secular Israeli sensibilities and just plants them over a biblical narrative. The actors speak Israeli Hebrew. They have Israeli issues and psychologies, but they're dressed in biblical clothing and they're situated in biblical settings. That's how it works. Um, I chose a, a little bite for so we can see what the show is about uh, that is known as a thou shall not rape. Now, rape is a very serious issue and this is a very serious satire but it's satire um using the ten commandments to uh criticize rape is, is just genius and if Alicia, you can just turn on the video let's watch it for two minutes and then we can discuss it further okay yes mm -hmm. so i will <laughs> הדיבר האחרון, לא תחמוד אשת רעך. יש? יש. הכל בסדר? כן. אפשר ללכת לאכול צהריים? מה יש לאכול היום? משה בתיבה. אפשר יום אחד בלי הבדיחה הזאת? תודה. יאללה, אנחנו. יאללה, בוא נאכל משהו. רגע, פליצה. מרים, אני ביקשתי ממך לא לקרוא לי ככה ליד העם, נכון? בסדר, תגיד, לא נראה לך משהו מוזר בדיברות האלה? מה, זה שזה נראה כמו תחת? לא, לא זה. אתה יודע, נו. לא תרצח, לא תגנוב. נו. מה אם לא תאנוס? אה, לא היה? היה משהו דומה, לא, זה לא תאנוס את אביך ואת אמך, לא תאנוס גדי בחלב אמו, לא היה? לא, אה? לא היה שום דבר על אונס. נו בסדר, אז אין בעיה, קחי את הדיברות, תוסיפי מה שאת רוצה, יש לך כתב יפה. פליצה, תאסוף את כולם בחזרה ותגיד להם שאלוהים אמר. נו באמת, מירי, באמת, זה לא יכול לחכות. לא, זה לא יכול לחכות. למה זה לא יכול לחכות? אה, הבנתי, בסדר. אה... כולם לחזור בבקשה, יש לי עוד משהו קטן להגיד לכם, בואו, בואו. או, רוצים לאכול. ש, שקט, הקשבה אליי עוד רגע. זוכרים את העשרת דיברות האלה? נו. No. אז יש עוד אחד, לא תאנוס. סבבה שכל אחד יוסיף אצלו, יופי. מה זה no, לא no, תאנוס? No, תגיד לי, מה זה לא תאנוס? שקט, לסתום את הפה, פשוט לא לאנוס. מה אם היא לבושה עם מחשוף? זה, זה נחשב אונס? אונס. אונס. ואם היא לא בהכרה? ברור שזה אונס. ברור שזה אונס. אפשר להמשיך? ואם היא מתה? גם אם היא מתה, זה עדיין אונס. אז פשוט לא לאנוס, בסדר? ומה אם היא אומרת לא אוב? אני לא מבין למה היא מתכוונת. לא. אני לא מבין למה אתה מתכוון. לא, זה עם של קקות. מה אני אומר לך כל הזמן? רגע, רגע, רגע. ומה אם זאת מישהי שכבר יצאנו בעבר כמה וכמה פעמים, כן? וכבר שכבנו בעבר, ועכשיו אנחנו רק ידידים, והיא באה אליי הביתה בקטע של ידידים, ועישנו קצת, ונרדמנו באותה מיטה, והיא עשתה לי סימן כזה שיש מצב, ואז אנסתי אותה. זה אונס? תגידו לי, מה יש לכם? מה קרה? אסור לאנוס! לא שאלו אתכם אם אתם רוצים, אמרו לכם אסור לאנוס! לא אם היא עשתה טיזינג, לא אם יצאתם פעם, לא אם ראית אותה ערומה. אסור לאנוס, מה לא ברור? או, תודה רבה. אלא אם אתה קצין. מה? לא. מה לא? מה לא? עכשיו גם לא קצין? די, נו, מה זה? שינו את כל החוקים ולא אמרו לנו. הרגע קיבלת את החוקים, הרגע. אוקיי, אז, is this a criticism of the Ten Commandments? Or is this something else? You might think that the issue here is, oh my gosh, I mean, I've never thought about this before. There is no thou shall not rape. We really need a thou shall not rape. And, and this is a criticism of the Ten Commandments for not including such a dictum. But that's really not what the, the skit is about. The real issue here is a terrible 
this functional, uh, I don't know, unattained gap between the real and the ideal. Everybody reveres the Ten Commandments. I mean, even if you're not religious, even if you even if you don't think that God gave the Ten Commandments and that Miriam could just add an eleventh one if she wanted to, you still say, "Yeah, thou shalt not, you know, honor your parents, don't steal, don't kill." Yeah, that's 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 something important. It's it's a good it's a good value, but everybody knows that just because it says thou shalt not steal doesn't mean that people don't steal, <laughs> and just just because it says don't murder doesn't mean people don't murder. So. So the critique here is about what's happening in our day and age. It's about the Me Too movement. It's about things that people say and things that people do and arguments that they have about things that are, are should should be as 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 obvious as the Ten Commandments. There might be here a criticism of the Judy's uh, Jewish traditional way of learning because the way they ask questions kind of reminds you of the Talmudic bartering, where it seems like, like to the secular eyes, it would seem that what the rabbis are doing, they're just reading into the text, whatever they want to read into the text, and, and whatever the rule said, then they just come and, you know, fix it up the way they wanted it. So there might be some sort of critique of the religious um, system, but this is not, rape is not a religious problem. Rape is a is a glo global problem. Rape is everybody's problem. And the, the skit is, is about something that is not because of the religion. And it's something that they're trying to turn back into religion to address satirically in a, in a uncomfortable way. Natalie Marcus, who, 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 who created the series, uh, who I, whom I spoke to, she said she uses this blend word. It's called muakaton. It means it's a connection between, you know, distress and skit. She says the skit, they're supposed to just distress you. I mean, they're supposed to be funny and we won't do anything that's totally not funny, but we won't do something that is only funny and doesn't have any element of distress in it. I mean, well, that's what they really want. They want to distress you. So why the outrage? The outrage is because for religionists, you can't take the patriarchs and show them like a bunch of infantile sex crazy guys. You just, you can't do that. It really is beyond the scope of, 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 of possible readings to the Bible. The problem is that the creators of Ayudim Bayim are interested in reclaiming the Bible as a source for interpreting their lives and their problems. They say, we're reclaiming the text. We, you know, graduated high school in an Israeli state school. We had to take this, we were forced to take a matriculation in Bible. We, it's our text. And we want to read into it and find answers which are kind of radical and open-ended and, and, and they're not like an answer. It's like a postmodern kind of answer, right? But we want to read the texts and we can read them too, even though we read them differently. Um, and the sincere, this is very sincere on both sides. The religionists are sincerely offended and the secularists and the creators of the show are sincerely trying to do something meaningful with value, with, with values. Now, of course, in the, in the, in the far edges uh, of the spectrum, there will, there'll be people who say, yeah, we love the Jews that are coming because all it's about is just saying that religion is, is stupid, but that's just not true. Just like on the other edge of the spectrum, there would be no willingness to accept any of the of the uh, series um, ideals. I said there's the historical there's the historical skits, which some of them um, were actually loved by uh, some religions. Um, so, the, I want to I want to close up here and 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 say the following the the skit ends which we didn't the skit the skit end which we didn't see um goes like this one of the guys is driving moses crazy and he says we need to we he, this guy he says we need a uh, a uh, category of defining what rape is and i have one rape is when a guy says it's rape and moses has it he's fed up he says to miriam i can't take this anymore you know what i'll deal with it when i enter the promised land now we all know Moses never reaches the promised land. And we, the viewers, we're in the promised land and the problem isn't going away. 
could it be that no matter how, how hard people are trying to get these simple notions like to be accepted and for rape to be obliterated could it be that it would never happen just like just like all the human fallacy you know greed and not honoring your parents i mean will it always be here no matter how hard we try and for this reason i think that the that the show at least from this example is not about exploiting the bible to mock the bible but about exploiting the bible to talk to the secular israeli world today so i'll stop here and i'll be happy to answer questions um thank you nasa yeah that was uh that was really 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 interesting um before so if everybody can start uh typing in questions to the q a box that would be uh great on the bottom of the screen um and while you're thinking about questions to ask nasa um could you just maybe nasa could you expand a little bit on this idea so if for the secular world, when they're watching the Jews are coming and they're watching it entrenched in, you know, biblical stories, biblical meanings, what, what, what content do you think they're gaining from it? What, what does the secular viewer gain from this kind of satire? Is it taking him more towards the kind of Me Too content? Or is it actually also um, maybe even educating them about, about religion in a very cynical way? Like, what would you say is the experience of the secular viewer when they watch this show? Um, well, I don't know uh, what people think, but I do know what the producers hoped for them to think, and that's what I'll say. And maybe you know, some you're a sociologist, maybe you can have you can have an idea. But um, Martha said, she said, yeah, we we're using biblical because we're reclaiming the text, but we're using the biblical sources for another another reason, and the reason is. The patriarchs are our screwed up parents. We're this screwed up family. And we need to take them, we need to drag them into the psychologist and talk about all these, like, like Abraham like was binding his son and trying to kill him. And all of our psychological, you know, identity problems as a Jewish people, as a Jewish nation, is just tied up to these stories. And we really want to talk about this. We really want to unpack this. So this is therapy. This is a form of talking about what hurts in our tradition to make things better, to write the new chapter, which does not supplant and does not erase the, the past. That would be like an untherapeutic kind of thing to erase your past, but you're supposed to retell it um, or come to peace with it. So that is what the producers, um, at least that's what Natalie Marcus, who, who I spoke to, was, was trying to do. And about education, I can say one thing that which I can say that I know. In the first uh, first series, first uh, yeah, the, the first 2014, there was some really good uh, biblical scenes. For instance, between Cain and Abel, there was this this argument about do you are, should we be vegan or not, and it was a really really good uh, skit that really read, you know, Genesis properly and then said something to our uh, to our life and a lot of bible teachers in the secular state system decided to use to bring this into class as an as another interpretation alongside whatever they were supposed to be teaching organically like nobody from top from the top from the minister of education said hey use the jews that are coming they just found it very very compelling and we're using it and it really it's like it's like it's like part of the curriculum because you're always supposed to talk it, like literal the literary critique of that of that whole episode is that we don't know why Cain why Cain was was going to murder Abel it's it's missing in the biblical so this was like they were killing each other because they were talking about do you eat meat or not it was perfect but then when the whole thing outbroke with the new outbreak this year suddenly the Ministry of Education said no we're removing any link on the site of the Ministry of Education to the show the Jews are coming because it's blasphemy because it's desecration and uh, and then teachers said no we're going to do whatever we want and the Ministry of Education can't tell us so yes there was a point of education but because many of the skits are very risque and very sexy um not all of them are so suitable uh for a pedagogical you know 
uh, purposes. Uh, but yes, they could be used and some, and, and, and for, for a fact, they have been used naturally, organically. Great. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for that. That's, um, that's really interesting. So we already have uh, a few questions and I'll start you off um, a question by um, Mohammed Ahmed, who's actually, uh, he's from the Wolf Institute. So um, he asks, how would you compare the Israeli reaction to this comedy to the British reaction to the life of Brian? It seems like there are many parallels, parallelisms, <laughs> but there's a lot of things in common. So how would you, how would you see that? Well, I think, I think it's true. And not only is this true, the creators of the news and are coming were definitely, you know, definitely thinking about the life of Brian when they were creating this. And they were expecting, they were really expecting this outcry. I mean, also knowing the history of life of Brian and knowing the reception history of life of Brian, they knew that this would be, they may even, even thought it might even be worse in some sense, because this was a small country. Um, but yes, for sure, there's, there's, there's a lot in common. Um, and I hope that the next episode uh, about life of Brian will be able to even uh, prove it in, in, a, in a more deep way that there, there, that these two that these two series have a connect uh, the movie and the series are linked in their satirical uh, spirit. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually also going to respond uh, to Muhammad's question. Um, I think another thing that's interesting to think about uh, the Jews are coming and and the life of Brian is that the life of Brian there's I think British um, the British society kind of reacted had like a gut. Uh, reaction to the fact that is Brian Jesus is Brian not Jesus right who is this Brian and I think the Jews are coming are doing something similar with like they're taking Moses and we just saw this right in in the skit that Netta showed they're taking Moses and they're making him ridiculous just as they took Jesus and they made him ridiculous when they made him a Brian and I think I think that there's something that as a society when when we see like as I don't know maybe people that are that are religious or people of faith when they see this kind of these these um, individuals ridiculed that creates a very very uh, tense reaction and right the fact that Miriam is called in, calling Moses there farty flitza right it's like first of all it makes Moses closer to us at at a certain level because suddenly we realize that like Miriam and Moses had well, they were part of a family they probably had jokes together right as any person does. Um, and, and in life of Brian, there's a scene where, you know, they're, they're about to, I think they're about to kill someone. And, and, and this woman says to a man, stop picking your nose. And suddenly you think, oh, in the, in the days of Jesus, like there was a problem. People used to pick their noses and mothers would comment to their children. So it actually brings those times, those biblical times or New Testament times closer to us. Um, but at the same time, it makes it ridiculous. And I think like, if we, if we think about Islam, right, then 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 the prophet part of part of what's I think beautiful about um, the stories of Prophet Muhammad is that he's very close to the people. You feel that he's part of he's part of like a society that he is like everybody. We have um, hadiths, we have stories about him and Aisha, about him and his wife, um, and how they would like sit together as a couple. And so I think in a sense, what the Jews are coming uh, is doing, and also what Life of Brian was doing is it's. It's making, it's taking down the boundaries between the self and um, the character that we read about so many times in a book. And now we're watching it on screen and we actually can think maybe in a more imaginative way about these characters. Um, and maybe we can actually feel closer to them because if Miriam can call Moses Flitza and I all farty, and I also sometimes laugh with my brother, then maybe Moses isn't that far away from me and maybe I can learn from him something. And so I think, um, that those parallels also also maybe have been created um, between these two shows. Nessa, do you want to comment more, or should we take yes, the next question? I, I'd be happy to comment um, about you know is Moses ridiculed or not. So the the creators decided they will not take a stance on the question is God real or not. They're going to work with the existential assumption that it's the humans who have to decide if the voices they're hearing are authentic or not. It's up, up to the humans. That's that's one of their decisions. And they've they built Moses as this really, you know, he's a middle manager. He's stuck between God who drives him crazy and the shitty people who drive him crazy too. And nothing he can do can make anybody happy. 
And this reading of, of Moses is, is not, you know, outrageous if you read the commentaries on the Bibles, the Midrashim, the Talmud. I mean, Moses' character, yes, he's 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 a he's a loof, he's a bum. He's he's the he's the closest, he's a you know the saintliest man in, in the Jewish tradition. But still, even in the Bible, he says, I haven't taken a single donkey. You know, you feel his pain. And putting it on screen is much stronger than any textual midrash because you really feel like he's a person. And that's, I think, one of the things I didn't say earlier about why it's so hard for people to accept the biblical interpretation on screen versus in comic strips, which there is a religious uh, a religious guy, a very, very talented you know, comics guy, and he does comics, very satirical comics, on, on the biblical on the Bible, but it's just comics. It's not a video, and it's not real people. And they don't speak in this terrible Israeli slang, and they're not like ugly, you know. <laughs> so it's like, I don't, I don't mean ugly. I mean, you know, uglified. Um, so, so that's, um, so that, so I'm just yeah. breaking what you said. Yeah. So we have a, a, a question from an anonymous attendee, and he asks, could you give another example from a different skit? Uh, of the Jews overcoming, of modern values being superimposed on the biblical text? Um, well, I would say that a very good example um, is this skit that came out this, uh, this, uh, this year, where you see the prophet Jeremiah standing in front of the people and telling them, the Assyrians are, are knocking on our gates. The Assyrians are knocking on our gates and he's just going on. And then they're like, one of the people is like, I'm really uncomfortable that you're speaking in the, in, you know, in masculine verbs. You're not, you're not respecting my pronouns. And he's like, the Assyrians are the <laughs> and this, and, and this is a very, very, very good critique of the, the, the Producers are pointing at themselves. It's, they're not laughing at, the, at anybody else because people who are using multiple pronouns are not the people sitting in yeshiva and studying you know, Jewish texts. It's them who use these multiple pronouns. And they're ridiculing maybe or commenting on, on a feeling that maybe, maybe it's, a, it's a very good thing and maybe it's a little ridiculous. And they need to be, they need to be as a satirical program, they, if they can't laugh at themselves, at something that some people from their community feel very strongly about, then it means that they're not a really satirical. So this is satirical, they, you know, if you're laughing at other people, you're not laughing at yourself, your aims are, you know, it's, it's a different kind of thing. But here they are questioning the, the secular Tel Aviv, you know, bon ton zeitgeist. Um, on a biblical theme. Yeah, I think also that skit goes on to later also, it's like, it's not only the pronouns, it's the whole like, you're triggering me, I'm not feeling very comfortable. So they really take like, what to us today is, is the way that we speak and the way that we think, we try to make everybody feel comfortable in a space, we try to use the correct pronouns, right? And they're really, they're kind of laughing at that. And I actually think, um, I agree with you. And I think that it's, um, it shows that the, the show is trying to be also fair. It's not like, oh, we're laughing at the religious or we're laughing at, you know, the Haredi or the ultra Orthodox. No, they're, they're just, they're, they're doing good satire and they're laughing at society and they're ridiculing many different items in it. And I think um, that that does show the strength of the show. I agree with you. Um, we have another uh, question here. So um, the person is asking, how do you feel about a teenager that when he hears the name Moses, the thing that springs into his mind is Moses' character on the show. That is a beautiful question. It really is. Um, because um, idealizing the, the secular reading of the Bible is also idealizing the fact that all this secular reader of the Bible has is two or three years of high school biblical education in us in his high school and that is all the bible he knows so his reading is very good in understanding contemporary life but is very bad in knowing what the bible 
said and what has been said about the Bible for many, many, many generations. And for me personally, it's it's a shame. Many times I'm like, I, when I spoke to, to, to Malcus, I discovered that even one place when they had like a great, great reference to a very famous Midrash about Korach, about, and the Korach episode, it was because one of the guys who was working with the lights, he used to go to a religious school and he just knew more than everybody else there. And that is a very, for me personally, that is something sad, but it's reality. And the fact that the only Moses they know is Yaniv Biton is not because of the Jews are coming. It's not the fault of the Jews are coming. It's a symptom. But the fact that the Jews are coming are making a show about Moses means that Moses still matters. And that's better than him not mattering at all. Yeah. I think I think that's um that's a really, really good, a really good answer. At least they know Moses, right? Um there's a question from uh, Facebook Live. Um, so I couldn't help seeing Mel Brooks and his shtick at work somewhere in the background. The comedy does raise the question of the place of the Bible as a source for ethical thinking. As you say, those who populate the Bible are norm are sorry are no moral examples to follow. But what does this satire tell us about biblical ethics? Uh, the question is from Ivan uh, Kochvas from Canterbury, London. So what does the satire tell us about biblical ethics? I think that the satire is trying to say that biblical ethics are very important to argue with, to think about, to use as a reference point. Um, we live in a very different world than those, I mean, for instance, feminism, that's a very big issue. And, and they're not trying to say, oh, those people, they were so stupid, they're it's not like that kind of thing. They were different than us. And this difference is good for us because we can see ourselves differently using those faraway people with faraway beliefs, people who had a God and had demons and angels in the world. That's, that's very important for us. We've lost all of that. You know, the holy canopy has been removed and we have this biblical ethics and we should take it seriously as a point for argument. We, we don't we don't take it as the holy word as the holy scripture that the people who look at but they still think that it could be a di it could give us a direction it, we could say we don't accept this anymore but at least we have something that we don't accept it's not nihilism um i don't know if i answered the question uh but that's what i would say yeah um we have a question here that's um that's directed at me. <laughs> um, so the question is, how do I as a religious person feel about these series? Um, and Anetta, and maybe you could also uh, answer it from uh, your standpoint as an Israeli Jew. Um, what I can say is that um, many times I watch the series and I'm, and I'm quite happy because I feel that um, it communicates messages and ideas that sometimes exist in the text. Um, and it, 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 it just, the way that it communicates with the text is, is um, it brings the text alive and it also, it helps me think about, think about like ideas for my personal sermons and synagogue. Um, it helps me think about how, how, how to bring the text alive for my students. So, so that's something that um, I quite enjoy in the series. At the same time, I will say that sometimes the series um, does make me feel uncomfortable and, and I do understand why people literally took to the streets a few months ago and protested against this show. I think that sometimes it's, I think sometimes they, they do it a little bit like over, it goes over the top. So even now in the episode that we just watched in the, in the small skit, I felt like there was a point where Moses, he was like, he wasn't, he didn't have authority and he was a little bit stupid um, and to me, Moses is a sacred man, right? And so, and so I think in my mind, they could have done this skit and at the same time, not ridiculed Moses that much, right? I understand that maybe it would be less, um, less sexy <laughs> if it's that way. But, but from my religious standpoint, I think that's something that when I watch the show, sometimes I'm like, they took it a little bit, a little bit too far. And, and I would just kind of lose that. Um, maybe I would just lose that comment or, or that, uh, that language sometimes, or language that I just don't feel comfortable with in general. Um, but I mean, that's that's my personal thing. Um, Netsa, maybe you want to talk about how religious audiences view this show? What do you think? 
Well, there's a very interesting thing that happened uh, when all this up, uh, you know, this erupted is that uh, the Israeli broadcast system, Khan, did this show in which they screened a few, a few skits to a di for diverse audience, um, you know, from, from the really ultra religious to, to different kinds of religious and, and secular, and from also from different, you know, people who are, are originated from North Africa and people, and they showed them different skits. And had them react up live. And for instance, when you know Queen Esther is, you know, is made into whore Esther, that was a no, I mean, nothing past that word, none of the even traditional people were willing to engage in what was saying, even though in religious sources, the fact that Esther was with. Uh, I don't know how to say that, pronounce that properly, that there is talk about that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a motif. But once they said she's a whore, everybody just, their ears turned off. But in other skits, m more the historical ones, where there was critique of things that, you know, spoke to them, for instance, you know, the way the Ashkenazi Jews were treating, for instance, the Sparty Jews, then they were really, you know, even the even the ultra Orthodox viewer said, this is really good. I like what they're doing here. So it's not only the message, it's also the means. And I think that a lot of the problems is when they use sex, because it's not only that it's the patriarchs, but it's also about sex. And that two things together is just a no and another no together. And that's just too much. Um, and I can say for myself that they had this skit um, in which um, it was about the rabbis and they're called the pairs in Hebrew, zugot. I don't know the, the, the way you have to say that in English. And it was all about, you know, coupling and, 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 and like gay things. And I'm like, there's nothing in this skit that is, that is smart or about the world we live in versus that world. It's just speaking a word in Hebrew that has changed its meaning and using the new meaning in the old setting. But there's nothing more than that. And that kind of offended me. Like, just, you know, there was no ethical uh, conundrum to be addressed by, by using the, the older sources. And it was just, for some people, it was a laugh. For me, it was like, I don't think this is so funny. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, um, we have here a comment. I think this is um, Eden uh, Haziz Tion is uh, is reacting, I think, to the conversation. And she's saying, um, satire always has to push it farther than we feel comfortable with. That is how we know that we're being pushed in regards to where we stand and everyone has their own line. So I think, Eden, if I can speak for you, um, she's saying that we have to have people that feel uncomfortable for the satire to actually work. Um, and another comment that has been offered here is, um, again, comparing the show to The Life of Brian, which we will talk about next week, that in Life of Brian, Jesus himself is never ridiculed, right? Only the people around him um, uh, and Brian, who is sometimes mistaken for Jesus. So maybe, maybe if we think about it, is this some sort of comedy? Is it a way to combine both the religious and non-religious audiences, right? Is, is, it maybe, is it maybe the ultimate way to bring these two societies together through through comedy and satire. Um, Netta, what do you think? I'm not sure that comedy and satire uh, of biblical texts done on video, like as a video, uh, would bring together a very large audience. You might be able to expand the, the viewers of Jews are coming a bit but it's in your face. And even if you remove, as I said, like sexual, if for instance, you know, Joseph wasn't a gay guy from Tel Aviv, which is like totally off limits. So fine, we'll, we'll, we'll forget about Joseph. We'll just, we'll just have Moses, right? Moses and his brother, um, Aaron, who's like, you know, his sidekick and his, these are motifs that are in the sources, but once they're in your face and they're talking like these two guys from Tel Aviv, some people, it just won't work for them. They won't like it. They won't find it funny. They will just find it offensive. Even if the message is something they could actually uh, sign on. Yeah. If it were written, it would be different. 
but the medium here is just too live. Yeah, I think um, we're coming to the close of the webinar. This really, this was really successful and it passed really quickly. Um, I want to just uh, end maybe with developing the idea that you that you touched on that that the Jews are coming or the secular sermon, um, the secular midrash. So if you can just give us a little bit from your scholarship just about that idea and then and then we'll we'll come to a close. Okay, so the Jewish tradition has always read the Bible and reacted to it and used current events to to say something new. And if every week in the synagogue, the rabbi is supposed to be speaking on the pulpit, so there's whatever happened this week in the city, and there's whatever the Bible says, and then let's say something about both of them at the same time. And this is a very ancient tradition, very ancient tradition. And it would, you would think that once people aren't believing in God and are not going to synagogue and are not learning Torah and are not engaging in these texts, then the, the biblical, you know, the whole, the whole corpus won't be a source for sermonizing, won't be a source for talking about what's bothering us today as a guide. It could be a contested guide. It could be a guide that I want to supplant, but it's still a guide. And the Jews are coming is an amazing phenomenon that, two, you know, 200 years after enlightenment, secular Jews still find the Bible a source for a, a debate about issues that are theological and ethical and social. And I and, and that's that's how I see at least part of the skits. You know, it's a big joke, different things, but the biblical skits, the good biblical skits are doing just that. And I find that very um, interesting. Yeah, I think um, also just for those of you that don't know, the, the series is aired on Friday night in Israel. And Friday night is when uh, Jews observe the Sabbath. It starts at Friday night and that's also when they go to the synagogue. So I think that maybe if we think about the Jews are coming as like an alternative sermon for the secular uh, the secular word, it's, it, world, it's interesting to see that um, secular Jews are, are really still turning to the, to the Torah, to the Bible as a source for critiquing their own society. And I think that in that way, Netta, what your scholarship is really correct in saying that um, the Jews are coming or the secular modern sermon. I think that's a very, a very interesting idea. So I want to, I want to really, um, if you all could have joined me in a round of applause for Netta, then I would be happy to invite you. But um, I just want to really thank Netta also for, for, um, for writing this paper because not much has been uh, written yet about the scandal of, uh, of, of the Jews are coming and also um, for participating in our webinar. Thank you to all our viewers um, who joined us. Please uh, join us again. So next week we have Professor James Crossley um, from St. Mary's University here in the United Kingdom um, who will be talking about the life of Brian, answering the ultimate question, is Brian Jesus? And I'm sure part of the um, themes of this conversation will continue with us to next week. So please, uh, you will get an email tomorrow with uh, the link to sign up. So do sign up and join us again uh, for our next episode. Thank you so much for joining everybody and have a good evening. Bye-bye.